well at this moment, uh, Tom Stafford and Eugene Sermonen, having flown closer to the moon than man has ever flown before, to within 10 miles of the moon on their first pass this afternoon, 13 and a half miles on the second pass, which for eight minutes of wild gyrating of their spacecraft gave all of us on the ground a near heart failure and obviously shook them up a little bit too. They are back safely now connected to the command module. They will uh, remove the hatches after pressurization. They will prepare the lunar module for jettisoning, uh, for being dropped from the command module and then set it up so that they can fire by remote control its uh, ascent engine again and send it into a solar orbit its work having been completed. In about uh, 45 minutes to an hour from now, they should be climbing back into the command module and uh, let poor old Snoopy go bye-bye. Uh, the uh, Bruce Morton at uh, Manned Space Center can tell us about what went on today in some homes in Houston, in the outskirts of Houston, uh, where they were watching this flight very carefully, believe you me. And if we had our moments of palpitating hearts, uh, I'm sure they did there too. Bruce? Walter, it's uh, the kind of a day that uh, you, you've been down here on the shots and you know what I mean. It's sort of like a club. The, the wives gather and they're always friends uh, whose husbands have been off on other space flights who can offer some reassurance. Mrs. Stafford, Faye Stafford, spent uh, virtually the whole day at home. She, I'm told, uh, does not watch television, but she does have uh, in the house one of those little speakers that relays the mission control commentary, and she's uh, been able to keep in touch that way. She's outwardly calm, uh, we're told, obviously feeling the strain. Uh, reporters, of course, have only seen her in, in brief glimpses. The other two wives got together for a short while, Barbara Cernan and Barbara Young. Uh, they had a briefing from astronaut Rusty Schweikert, who was explaining to them all the intricacies of the separation between Snoopy and Charlie Brown and the later Snoopy swoop towards the moon. Uh, a number of astronauts' wives spent the rest of that day with Mrs. Young after she left the Cernans and went back to her own home. Mrs. Slayton, the uh, wife of Deke Slayton, who's in charge of the astronaut personnel. Mrs. Walter Shira, Mrs. Mike Collins, Mrs. Fred Hayes, Mrs. Jim Lovell, and Mrs. Neil Armstrong, whose husband, of course, uh, if all goes according to plan, will be the commander of Apollo 11, the moon landing ship. I have one definite indication of relaxed tensions that I can report, and that is we are reliably informed that Mrs. Stafford plans to have her hair done tomorrow. Walter? Well, while there, uh, resting a little easier tonight, uh, knowing that the rendezvous has taken place and the docking has now taken place, and her husband's short will be safely back in the command module. Uh, John Young, who's been flying the patrol duty in the command module at 69 mile altitude throughout these uh, eight hours that the lunar module has been away, is a very busy man preparing a little at home for uh, Stafford and Cernan. And Bill Stout, Leo Krupp, out at uh, North American, and Downey can tell us about it. Walter, as you pointed out, even though they're going to get rid of the limb, they're very busy right now tidying it up. And not only that, they're using it as kind of a multi-million dollar wastebasket, putting a lot of things in it that they don't want to take back to Earth in the command ship. Leo, what do they go through at this point in shifting cargo back and forth from one to the other? Well, Bill, the first thing John's going to do is pressurize the tunnel hatch so he can remove our... He's going to pressurize the tunnel so he can remove our tunnel hatch and get up there and inspect to see that all 12 of those docking latches are engaged. Then he'll start removing the tunnel hardware so we'll have the passageway open between the two vehicles. Now, the one thing different uh, in this portion of the flight is, is that we're going to put the probe and drogue into the lunar module, and it will be strapped down in the lunar module, and we'll be jettisoned with the lunar module and go to the sun. So we will not be carrying that hardware with us anymore after do we this. Do, that? do we do that, Leo, just to get rid of that much extra weight? Uh, yes, we don't want that weight on the front end of the, uh, of the command module, and uh, this is a convenient way to dispose of it. So we put it in the lunar module. What else do you put in there before breaking the two apart? Well, I don't know. I uh, would imagine the, the crew will probably take another good drink of the, of the lem water before they leave, and uh, I don't know whether they'll bring that with them into the command module or leave it in the lunar module. Water without hydrogen gas? I should think they'd bring it in. Well, it has iodine and uh, may also have a little gas in their water, too, I understand. But I, I think the point of all this is, Walter, that... Uh, 
They're going to be busy in there for an hour or so, Leo, before they finally come in and button it up and say goodbye to Lem forever? Yes, they have a, uh, a lot of work to do on the Lem system to prepare it for the separation and also the uh, apps burn to depletion, which will be a ground control burn. So they do have to set up some controls in the lunar module. So it's about an hour and a half from now before they break off and perhaps a half an hour after that before they give it the burn that'll send it into orbit around the sun. And the people at Grumman at Bethpage, Long Island, Walter, may regret it, but that's the last any of us will see of Lem ever again. Indeed, I think we've all become rather fond of uh, Snoopy in this flight, uh, not uh, solely because of that uh, endearing code name for him and all that uh, envisions for us, but uh, because that lunar module number four, as it is called, technically has performed so beautifully. We might find out just how beautifully that uh, LEM has performed by asking Nelson Benton and Scott McLeod at Grumman Aircraft, where they build these uh, lunar modules, how they assess the LEM's overall performance today. Uh, Walter, we've been standing here trying to uh, evaluate just uh, how LEM has done, and uh, we were trying to think of some things it's done wrong. Scotty, can you think of anything? Oh, I think it's just performed superbly. I can't think of anything that it has done wrong. Uh, there was, of course, that anxious moment in there, but we find that uh, that was human error. The switch was in the wrong place because uh, putting it in the right place was not in the checklist. Uh, Lim has Lim, uh, separated as it should have. It, uh, it just performed just about everything as it should. Some of the cameras didn't work too well, but they're not part of the Lim. No, and now I guess, as you mentioned, it's finding its place in the sun. Well, Scott, Bill Stout was saying, uh, you know, it's gone forever, but you will uh, get a look at how it performed in lots of uh, remote ways, will you not? Oh, yes, yes. There will be a lot of data that comes back from this, not just the photographic data, but all of the data that has been telemetered back, and then the briefings from the crew. So, uh, Walter, we're in LAM waiting for that LAM up there to go out and be gone forever, and we'll go out of here and see you again on 11, I guess. <laughs> Indubitably. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. And so the flight of Apollo 10, while not yet brought to a successful conclusion, which will come only when the astronauts are safely back on the surface of the Earth, has performed the major function of its mission. It has proved through these daring three astronauts that uh, all of the systems work properly and that there should be no reason why man cannot, perhaps as early as July, land on that fixed spot on the moon's equator. This has been indeed a dramatic close to one of the most dramatic days in the history of space exploration. These are sailors of the sky, and what uh, we've seen and heard today make the great ocean voyages of the earthbound seem, well, earthbound indeed. For as the poet wrote, the crew of Apollo 10 has slipped the surly bonds of Earth and carried us over into tomorrow. In the past few hours, man has come closer to the moon than ever in his history. There were those terrifying moments when you could almost hear the world hold its breath when just 13 miles from the moon, the astronauts and Snoopy, the lunar module, found themselves gyrating so wildly. But most of all, it's been a day of triumph. We've shown that man and machine can work in the lunar atmosphere, that the widely debated decision to go with two manned spacecraft rather than a single giant was correct, and the problems of the day seem also to have proved out NASA's decision to go with this dress rehearsal for that magic moment in July when man finally steps foot on the moon. This is Walter Cronkite, CBS News, Space Headquarters. Good night. This has been a CBS News special report, The Flight of Apollo 10.